Yo, what's up guys? I'm just gonna wait for a second and let a few more people show up to the chat room and then we'll get started. And uh, in the meantime, uh, you guys let me know how it sounds. Let's see. Oh, I can add filters. That's pretty cool. Dance party and bubbles. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Dan, that's it's, it's pretty bright. All right, so hang on. Let me uh, let me hop in the chat room real quick over here. That way it'll be easier. And uh, I'll try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. As some of you all know, maybe you don't, maybe you do. I had some hands-on time today with the Fujifilm X-T3. These were full production copies uh, of the camera. So these were not like pre-production. These were not, um, you know, beta firmware copies or anything. These were actual uh, production copies. Unfortunately, none of the raw conversion uh, programs as of yet can support the new RAF files that are being produced by the X-T3. So unfortunately, even though I did shoot a bunch of raw files, I was not able to, eh, like view any of them. Like there's no support for them yet. So uh, as soon as Adobe Raw releases something or as soon as Apple releases something, we can do the update and we should be able to take a look at those files, see what the noise profile is going to look like on um, on those images. Uh see what uh i mean with the backside illuminated sensor in theory the uh, image quality should dramatically in improve um if i if i remember correctly like the high setting of iso on the fuji xt2 is 12,800. i never went up that high uh, i always make sure um i always make sure to like limit the ISO in auto ISO mode. If I'm if I'm just trying to shoot and I need to get the shot, I usually set it up in um, automatic ISO and I set an upper limit of 6400. But from what I could see on the screen, not necessarily being able to look at the files themselves, uh, it looked like I might be able to go up even higher. So maybe 8000, not really for sure yet. Uh, Let's see. Let me get the chat. Live chat. Let's check it out. Uh, Rangel says, uh, what do you think is the best feature? Probably eye autofocus. Um, that is probably the top feature as of now uh, as far as the Sony system is concerned. You know, if you do any sort of portrait work, if you do any sort of video work or whatever, uh, being able to enable that, being able to just get it, and know that it's going to lock on to your subject's eyeball. Considering that that is, in fact, the most important part of an image. If you're, at least if you're shooting any image with a person in it. You know, you don't want their nose in focus. You don't want their ears in focus. You want that eyeball in focus. So having the ability to shoot a photograph or shoot video and have that eye autofocus track your subject's eyeball in continuous mode, I think that is probably the most awesome new feature of the X-T3. The X-T3 uh, is a vast improvement over the X-T2 because of that feature, because of the backside illuminated sensor. Having less noise on a smaller sensor, since you do not have uh, the real estate of a full frame, any improvements you can make that helps reduce uh, image noise, ISO performance or boost uh, ISO performance, is a massive, massive thing. So it is, it's becoming easier and easier via technology for uh, APS-C sensor shooters to get all of those benefits without having to get the larger size sensor and carry around the extra weight of the larger size glass. Uh, hang on, we had... Hey, Daniel, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Uh, Personalized Works says, does it have a flip-out screen? Uh, it has a flip screen, but not a flip-out screen. Not like the uh, X-T100. 
The X-T2 and the X-T3 both share this style screen. So if you're shooting in portrait and you're shooting down low, you'll be able to see your screen like that. It's kind of a novelty. Um, the X-T100 actually does something very similar. Uh, but it, it does the tilty, but it also does the flip out. It actually has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has two hinges on that camera. And I really, really wish that they had put in the X-T100 uh, flippy slash tilty screen on the X-T3. But to this point, they didn't. Uh, that's a little unfortunate. It's not a, a deal breaker, but it's, uh, it's no help to people that do a lot of self-video, like myself. So I am still probably going to continue to use my Canon M50 uh, for self-video. I have full confidence in the uh, autofocus tracking at least in 1080p and uh, so far it's been getting my self video uh, as far as like YouTube videos and stuff like that just fine but yeah it, that would have been a really really nice feature for uh, people that were doing self video Fujifilm I think probably will incorporate that into whatever future cameras uh, that they're going to develop it, it's just too valuable I mean it's it's an amazing design I don't know why they don't just start cramming it into everything it's, it's that good. It really is. Uh, let's see. Wrangle says, hopefully Fuji adds a feature where you can turn eye auto on without having to go into the menu. Uh, you should be able to set it to a function button, just like anything else. Uh, Fuji is pretty customizable with their function buttons. Uh, just like the Fuji X-T2, you've got a function button right up there in between your shutter speed and exposure compensation dial. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you should be able to add it right there. It should be, you know, not to mention, you could also add it into like your uh, quick settings, your your my my settings, I think it's what they call it. Uh, you should be able to add it in there, get extremely fast access, and then, you know, have it on, you know, as much as you need it for a particular shoot. Uh, Daniel says, have you ever tethered your Fuji with Lightroom? I don't use Lightroom, so no. I'm, I know, I know, I'm one of those weird sons of bitches that don't use Lightroom, but I, honestly, I can't stand Adobe. I don't really like any of their products. Um, I, I, I just don't do it. Sorry. <clears throat> but I have tethered before just to test it out, and it actually works really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mark Eggers says, can you assign a button to turn on? I, yes, you can. I just, I think I just answered that question. So, yeah, you can turn, uh, you can assign it to a function button, just like you can with anything else uh, you can set up your AF mode to a function button you can set up your film simulations to um, uh, a function button like, almost, there's almost nothing on a Fuji camera uh, that does not enable you to uh, program it to whatever you need so you can highly highly customize your Fuji camera because there are so many programmable uh, buttons on those cameras so uh mark eggers says says what uh, what do you use for post-processing i use a plethora of things uh, it depends on where the photograph's going it depends on the client if it's just me i, I just use uh, apple photos most of the time it, they've got an, a really good uh, image processor raw processor raw conversion uh, but if i'm if i'm doing more critical stuff i'll either use like capture one uh they process fuji raw files really well uh and pictorial honestly does a really good job too and it's super super cheap and then of course i do a lot of effect uh style photograph or photograph editing programs uh elsewhere like i don't know i do a lot of stuff with snap uh snapseed on my ipad pro uh, i gotta be honest man i have never seen an iPad video editor as good as that one being completely free. I mean, it is pretty astounding what you can accomplish with that app. So if you happen to have an iPad Pro and you've got the, uh, you got the pencil, you're able to do quite a bit of stuff very quickly and efficiently. And, and that's what I like. I don't even like taking my, my computer with me anywhere. Because I, I like the app, iPad Pro so much better. But in a lot of cases, I will also use Affinity Photo. It also has a built-in uh, RAW. It has a develop module, so I can 
edit those photographs in a Affinity Photo. Uh, it's not a cataloging program, unfortunately, so if you happen to get a shot that you just want to do some work on, uh, it's a lot like Photoshop in that respect. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, Mick Way. <laughs> he said, uh, I like how you admit to being a Fujifilm fanboy. You just got, uh, you just go hard in the paint for Fuji. If uh, you were analyzing yourself, do you think you would be critical? Absolutely. I am, honestly, I am the most, I am most critical of myself. True story. Of course, I'm not going to make a video about me criticizing myself. Who the hell wants to watch that? Owen says, I talked to the Fuji guys uh, when they were in Lexington Wednesday, and uh, they said that changing the screen would have required a change to the body mold they use for the X-T3. I, I believe that because there is a, a huge section on the left-hand side of the uh, X-T100 that kind of has to be removed in order for that screen to fold out. Um, I don't think I don't think anyone would have been pissed though if they had done that if they had altered that one little side that one little strip on the left hand side of the uh, the camera I don't think anyone coming from an XT2 would have been like oh, there's absolutely no way I could shoot a photograph with this no no one would have everyone would have been much happier. Most people would. I mean, there, there might be a few people out there that would be like, oh, I'm really concerned about the durability of this particular hinge design, blah, blah, blah. But I would not have. I would have been just like, this uh, is amazing. And it would, it would have made it just that much easier of a pre-order purchase. Uh, most people want a flip-forward screen. I, I would say that there's probably a small percentage of people that don't want one. The 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 percentage of people that want one is way way higher. Uh, Wrangle says Capture One is superior in reading Fuji files, but sucks in cataloging, organizing pictures. What do you recommend? Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. What is it? Let's see. There's Capture One and there's also On One. I think On One has a pretty good cataloging uh, feature, or whatever. But I mean, ultimately. I, most of the time, I'll just catalog it back into Apple Photos if you happen to be an Apple user. So if, uh, I mean, it, it's a great cataloging program, and you can set up libraries as well, you know. Uh, not to mention Apple Photos allows you to have extensions. So if you're just trying to do light editing, you can usually use uh, some of your other photo editing programs as plugins to Apple Photos and just edit direct, then keep it inside the Apple Photos library. Works really good. Uh, Owen says, so the old style screen helps keep the cost down. I'm sure. I'm sure. That way they didn't have to change the whole damn thing. And honestly, uh, I think they're going to do a good job with it because it's not like it's a, it's a deal breaker. So if they were able to keep the cost down, like you said, uh, at this $14.99 price point, I mean, Lord, man, I can't even imagine, honestly, what their total sales is actually going to look like. So, uh, let's see. Owen says, I will keep my fingers crossed for a change to the screen on the X-H1. Uh, I would actually like to see that as well. It honestly makes a bit more sense on the X-H1 than it does the X-T3. But at the same time, it's just like, I would like to have it in, all in one. I want IBIS and a flippy screen, full touch interface. I want an all in one camera. You know, I don't want to buy two or three or four different cameras. I've got four or five cameras now. I'm tired of that shit, man. I want to sell all of it and get back to one camera, one system, one set of lenses for everything. Um, Charles says, forgive me if this has been asked, but uh, can you view and control any features of the X-T3 wireless via mobile device? Yes, you can. It works uh, almost exactly like the X-T2. I don't know if they have improved their phone app, their mobile app, to an extent. Um, I mean, I haven't gotten any updates. I would assume that that is probably uh, the, cru the, the, the crux of the whole system. And if they don't upgrade the phone app, the mobile app, then you're probably not going to find uh, much improvement either, you know, either way. So I haven't seen any uh, recent updates on the mobile app yet. I would like to see them do that for sure. I would like to see uh, the ability to record in higher than 720p 
from the app. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but they do take a high res and then down res into that 720p. Most people don't even know the difference. I know that I didn't when I first started shooting. I was like, damn, that looks pretty damn going good. And I went on ahead and edited it as if I thought it was in 1080p. And yeah, it was in 720, man. Didn't even know the difference. It, it, it looked that good. Uh, Polyrhythm says, greetings from Belgium. Greetings, my friend. Purchased my first camera uh, a couple of months ago, the Fujifilm X-T2 with the kit lens. Have been shooting with it every day since. I love it. Great channel, by the way. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Mark Shade says, uh, did you notice a significant uh, increase in performance for continuous focus while shooting photos and video? I did. Everything was very, uh, a lot snappier. But in, you have to realize that the processor is vastly improved in this new camera. It's able to. Pro it's got a quad-core processor now. It is chewing through all of that data, and it has made it so much faster. Uh, it's it's almost comical. Um, like I said, I was only able to hands-on with it for maybe ten to fifteen minutes. That was about it. Like there, there was a bunch of people there that wanted to to get a shot at it, and I didn't want to hog it. Um, I mean, I probably just should have just said, you know what, wait your damn turn. But I didn't. That was nice, except to that old guy that was giving me shit in the line. But uh, it was actually a really uh, amazing uh, experience overall. Hey man, thanks for the super chat, BizDak Gaming. Uh, will they put the XT3 features on my X-H1. I would almost be willing to bet that they will. Um, I don't know to what extent it will be possible for everything or to what extent the total amount of performance you'll be able to expect because, if I'm not mistaken, the processors are going to be different. Uh, but I could be wrong. I mean, I the X-H1 was never really on my radar. I've been pausing quite a bit and been waiting for uh, the X uh, T3 and but I would say and this is just a guess because they are still rolling out firmware updates even for the X-T1 I mean that camera is still getting updates um, and that camera is now four years old so I'm anticipate, uh, anticipating the X-T2 to continue to get updates all the way at least if we're just judging on pattern you know if they've been updating the xh1 or the uh xt1 for four years we can at least expect the xt2 to be uh supported for the next two years uh that being the case i would say that the x h1 will probably be heavily updated at least over the next three to four years so I don't know what they've got planned. It's not like they told me anything, um, but yeah, they had a lot of they had a lot of glass on the table, and they the the, the guy seemed like it, he was hesitant because I was trying to you know put some of their slower lenses and trying to pair it up with the new processor. You're like, okay, uh, you know the 56 1.2 is a portrait lens. It's kind of slow, right? But I was thinking, you know. Maybe, just maybe, the, the new processor and, and the new sensor or whatever, maybe it'll speed that up a little bit. And I will say this, it did. You're going to notice a much, much snappier response. So some of those slower uh, Gen 1 lenses that they had released, they're going to feel much snappier with this new uh, processor and this new sensor. Um, I think you're probably going to find that some of those older lenses that people had kind of like... I don't really want to mess with it. You know, they're slow and they're kind of clunky. You might want to try picking them up again. I'm, I'm actually going to try out a few of those older Gen 1 lenses as soon as I get my X-T3. I'm really, my fingers are crossed, I'm really hoping that I get uh, on the first wave of the pre-order crowd. Um, but those new lens or those older lenses, I, I was... I, I was sneaky about it, though. I was like, I was throwing on the 60 millimeter macro. I threw on the 56 1.2. Uh, I threw on the, what was it, the 35 1.4. And they're still noisy. I mean, there's nothing we can do about the noise because of the uh, stepper motors that they used to use. Uh, but they were much snappier. So, yeah. All right. I had another super chat. Long Rider didn't even say nothing. Didn't even make a comment. Man, I love you. 
so hard, bro. I really do. Let me get back to the live chat now. Uh, let's see. Um, Sam Foe says, if the X-T3 would have had a flip-around screen, it would have been an easy second purchase uh, for me for vlogging at this price and features. I currently shoot with the A7 III. And, and, I, and I realize it because, honestly, um, I still shoot with a Sony camera. As a matter of fact, most of that B-roll footage that I took today was uh, with my A6000. And, the, I mean, the autofocus capabilities of the Sony cameras, I mean, I, they're just reliable. So, you know, and I was, and I had the Fuji X-T2, you know, I wanted to kind of set it next to the X-T3, so I needed to use something. And my Canon M50 is still not here yet. So, um, I'm still using a Sony camera that, that the, their autofocus is. It's, it's very reliable. Um, but yeah, if they had put in a flip around screen, it would have been one of the easiest choices, I think, for most people uh, to plop that money down. Uh, Luke says, does it have focus stacking? I believe it does. Yes, sir. Um, I, that wasn't one of the things uh, that my viewers uh, asked me to find out. So uh, what I wanted to do was make sure that I got to those questions as soon as possible. Um, and, of course, my time ran out. So that wasn't uh, something that I actually looked into. But I would say that, yes, it does. I'm almost positive I saw it in the menu. I can't confirm 100%, but I do, I do think I remember seeing it. Am I back? Am I back? Oh, my battery's going dead. Crap. Crap. This sucks. <laughs> Crap. Yeah, hang on. Let me let me unplug this and maybe it'll swap over to my internal mic. I'm using a uh, lavalier right now. Alright. Mic is cut. It's internal mic. Is it good? Please let me know. I'm so sorry, guys. I apologize. I was trying to answer questions. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate it. Oh, man. 
Okay, are we good? Okay. I can't go back to the lab, man. My, the battery's almost dead. Looky. The, the transmitter battery is almost dead. I, I'm sorry, man. Believe me, I, I don't want to be using this internal mic. It is trash. Um, but, all right, man. I, <laughs> I didn't know, man. I was trying to answer questions and guys, I, but y'all are so nice. Especially Sam, $2. Audio's gone. <laughs> Oh shit! So funny. I'm I'm sorry. Wish. <laughs> Luke, good comment. I'm not gonna repeat it on air, but fantastic comment. All right, Gerald says, uh, waiting to see his face when he really. Yeah, sorry guys. Uh, Henry says, I like your videos and the new daily format you're currently doing. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You know, I'm not. I am not everyone's cup of tea. I am not here to please everyone, and I cannot uh, help everyone, uh, you know, be happy with the content I put out on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, there are plenty of other channels that, you know, someone is bound to suit you. And, I, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to be 100% myself. I would rather be myself and be rejected than be somebody else and be accepted by everyone. So, I am not interested in being a manufactured version of myself. Just not interested. Uh, Sam says, uh, internal mic is crap, but it's clear enough. Yeah, I know. That's the reason I use the lav mic, man. Um, all right, any other questions? Thought I went deaf. No, Charles, you're good, brother. You are good. Gerald says, I for one dig your no BS attitude. Appreciate that. Um, bullshit just, it just takes up time, man. It really does. It, it's, it's a waste of time. And... Uh, if you all want me to give you some no BS advice right now, if you are even kind of sort of close to being on the fence with the X-T3 and you don't have any other potential contenders in mind, it's a no-brainer purchase. Seriously. It is... The only thing that, like, kind of messes with me just a little bit is the fact that it was made in China. Now, I know that they did that to keep the price down. Cost of labor in China is fantastic. I mean, everyone's making stuff there because it is so cheap, but it did not feel compromised whilst I was hanging out with that camera today. It did not whatsoever, in any way, shape, or form, feel compromised compared to my Fuji X-T2. And I'm, and I'm kind of a stickler uh, about quality, about build quality, especially, I mean, if you're going to spend a couple thousand bucks, man, I want that stuff to feel rock solid. I, I'm not necessarily um, going to harp on where it was made, but I mean, it has at least got to feel nice in my hands. So I will say that it uh, it did not feel compromised. And that's a good thing because, you know, Fuji has built up a reputation for itself to, uh, of being premium, of, of being high quality. And I did not, I mean, that was the last thing I wanted to see them do was make a, a really bad uh, production location decision and compromise the quality of that camera so let's see more questions more questions um mark Edgar says i think you keep it real i like real me too man i'm a big fan uh Cosmo Gang said, just got here. Uh, did you get to hold the X-T3 with the new battery grip? I did. Uh, damn near the entire time. The new grip profile looks incredible from what I've seen compared to the X-T2. Honestly, it was not that much different. Uh, it was very, very similar. So you're going, uh, you're going to get a very similar experience in vertical, but it is significantly different in landscape. That, that grip... Is so much chunkier here on the finger hold part. Uh, I would almost be willing to compare it. Oh man, I don't know what to compare it to. I don't think it. I mean, it doesn't feel nearly as deep as the XH1, but it, it has that same sort of uh, profile as the XH1. It, but I mean, it really does make it significantly thicker. I, I I'm still ambivalent 
about it. I, I kind of like the smaller profile of the X-T2 with the grip, but I mean, you know, different strokes for different folks. The one good thing about the X-T3 is that you, you're not required to buy the grip in order to get, you know, those beefier functions, which is good. Ah, and the fact that you've got a headphone jack built into the camera also helps to alleviate the need for the battery grip. Um, the removable door, especially if you're going to put that camera in a rig, being able to remove the entire door from the headphone, uh, microphone, HDMI, and the USB-C port, you can remove that whole door you are able, I, I found this out today and I wasn't for sure, um, you are able to charge this camera via USB-C while using it. None of that $190 USB-C adapter crap like Canon's trying to pawn off. You can charge this camera via USB-C while using it. So you put a battery pack on a rig, no need for the grip. Put a battery pack on a rig, plug it into the USB-C, unlimited power. Use your anchor power banks or whatever. Whatever you've got, you can charge the camera while using it. Top notch, boys. Top notch. Well, let's see. <clears throat> Armed AI says, so what's the deal with the back uh, illuminated sensor? It's good, man. I'm telling you. I mean, I haven't been able to look at the raw files, but just looking at... Uh, just being able to acquire focus as fast as I was. And I made them. I, I forgot to tell you all this in, in, my, in my preview. They didn't really have any, like, dark areas. I mean, it was a camera store. Well lit. Whole front of the store is, is windows. So there was really no bad lighting in the place. I made them. I said, do you have a boiler room? Do you have like a utility room? I said, take me in there and let me shoot into the dark. So I do have a couple of raw files that have, you know, some low light. And I was still able to acquire focus like that. So that negative three EV with the backside illuminated sensor is definitely working. Uh, da -da 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 Uh, Gustavo says, I want the X-T3 or the X-H1, but uh, maybe I have to wait for the X-H2. That's up to you, man. Armed AI says, I'll admit, I'm hung up on the China thing, but I get it. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're going to be competitive, and you know, Fuji needs that, needs that edge. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but they definitely need that edge. I mean, they're, in the minds of most people, they're already at a disadvantage because it's an APS-C size sensor, right? Everyone is on the full frame tip. You know, well, I don't get as much depth of field and, you know, you don't get as good a low light performance. You know, technology is overcoming a lot of the things that we would traditionally anticipate being meh or I just can't do it or, you know, my professional work requires the best. You know, that whole mentality. Uh, you know, the technology portion of photography is getting insanely good. A lot of the old arguments, you know, they don't stand... And, and Fuji has such great colors anyway. I mean, I would be willing to take the APS-C sensor of the Fujifilm X-T3, be able to shoot in, shoot everything in, like, Eterna or, uh, or Classic Chrome and just call it a day. Just the time savings alone would be worth it to me. I'm, I'm just telling the truth, man. It, it saves so much time. I'd be willing to sacrifice that much depth of field to save a whole bunch of time in post-production. Um, Boogernator, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Knobs, poopy sound, save Caleb from the palm trees. True story. Yeah, man, my, my transmitter went dead, so I had to unplug and use crap sound. Thanks for bringing it up, man. You hurt my feelings. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Holy crap. Okay. Uh, Polyrhythm says, uh, it's a mental thing, but I suffer from it as well. Just knowing that my X-T2 was made in Japan, it's a feeling I love. Me too. That's probably the reason I'm never getting rid of it. I love you, baby. 
Mm. I love her so much. She's done me so good. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to sell it. You know, a lot of people want to trade in their their gear and stuff like that. I'm not doing it. It's not happening. Not happening. I'm just going to keep it. I mean, like th this is my first true love with Fujifilm. You know, and you know stuff like that. That's the reason I still have my a uh, Sony A6000. It was the first camera that I got into with uh, Sony, so I've I've kept it. I've sold my A6500 and my A6300, and I kept that one. Because I'm kind of waiting for the A6700, whatever that's going to be. So I might get it. I don't know. Oh, God, man. Y'all are chatting it up. Uh, Charles says, uh, I've got a Nikon D300 and have thought about upgrading to another DSLR. I've been on the fence about mirrorless. However, I'm really digging the X-T3. And I think you will, man. Uh, it is just chock full of everything you need and a whole bunch of stuff you probably didn't think you need. So... You're going to find little uh, little Christmas presents every time you use your camera, man. Henry says, I thought you made a very uh, very good points about how a person uh, couldn't feel obligated when flown out and uh, put up for room and board. Uh, and it felt like Canon did that to deflate Fuji X-T3 YouTube marketing because they all mostly in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, they're all competing, man. They're all working really, really hard against one another. Um, and, and it is marketing, guys. I mean, it's... It's hype, it's marketing, it's it's buzz, it's, it gets us YouTubers talking about uh, the camera, and it works. It really does. I'm not saying, you know, people think that I'm pissed all the time, like, <laughs> I don't know why. They're like, dude, why are you so mad in your videos? And you're so, what, are you hurt? Are you upset? Are you jealous? I'm like, no, I'm none of those things. I've been to press junkets, but I got shit to do here. I can't fly off every single time they go, Hey, we got a new hunk of crap to show you. You want to come take a look at it? And I'm kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'd like to. I mean, I, I like drinking for free. But, uh, no, man, I got shit to do. So, no, it's not that I don't get invited. I just, I can't go to all of them, and I don't really want to. Uh, it, it's, it, I mean, I wouldn't mind if, I wouldn't mind if it was a press junket that was just like hotel and food it, but when they start throwing in booze and we're gonna take you out to nice restaurants and all that kind of stuff and you know if it was just that fine i mean it, it's a lot easier to be critical when they haven't just spent an absolute shit ton on you um uh, but they do they do and a lot of uh, a lot of youtubers they're, they're not going to say anything critical about the brand that just spent a couple of thousand dollars in pr money on you to to send you somewhere you know they're just not they're not going to send you if you talk trash i mean who 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 wants that <laughs> i mean what a shitty investment on their part if they did um let's see See, Too Smart says, I gotta wait to see what Sony does on September 19th. Uh, that will end this year's camera craze and decisions will be made. I agree. I think a lot of people are, are, are gonna do the same. Fuji and Sony are killing it right now. I'm telling you. They've got almost everything we want. And it makes it a very difficult decision. For those of you that are just tuning in, I'm sorry about the audio. My lavalier went dead and I just, I, I can't do anything about it. I mean, I guess I could go grab my road. Uh... Yeah, I can do that. Man, if y'all would be so patient as to give me just a moment, I'm going to at least go grab my uh, little shotgun mic and hopefully try to improve this shit show. All right, everyone's still here. Oh, y'all are so good to me. I love you all. Y'all are like my favorite people on the whole, on the whole internet. All right, y'all let me know if it uh, if we got if we're back to good audio. Yeah, maybe I'll just put it like over here. It's kind of out of out of frame. All right, it's up to you all. Let me know. All right, let me go ahead and keep reading comments just in case everything's working fantastic. 
All right. Um, Jesus Christ, man, you all are chatting. Henry says, uh, for sure, all that functionality from the start. Yep. Uh, Sam Foe says, is the video down sample from 6K kind of like the Sony APS-C? Uh, yes. Uh, the Fuji X-T2 has had that from jump. That's the reason their their video looks like, I mean, it fooled me. I, I seriously thought that I was recording in 1080 uh, with the app, and it wasn't. It was, it was actually in 720p. Knocked me out of the, uh, I thought, yeah, this is a pretty good looking video. And I go to edit, and I realized that it was still 720p. It's crazy. Uh, let's see here. Mark Hager says, uh, it looks like one of the grip plates uh, that you can get for the X cameras. Yeah, it does. As a matter of fact, it looks almost exactly like that. Uh, the What he's talking about is the grip, the new uh, battery grip for the X-T3. Uh, it has a very deep purchase, uh, whereas the X-T2 battery grip was just kind of, it was a nice little bump. You know, it added a little something there, but it was it was a bit more smooth around the hand grip. Uh, Henry says, for your information, three uh, mice and, he has three blind mice and an elephant photography channel. Also mentioned Caleb Pike. Yep, I know. I watched his video. I'm, I, I know Hugh Brownstone very well. He's been on my uh, channel before uh, we hung out. Uh, at the Sony press events. He's a nice guy, super nice guy. He's a very intelligent man. He is, honestly, <coughs> he, is ex he is my polar opposite. He is a wordsmith, but he doesn't curse. He's like super articulate, and he, you know, he tries to maintain, you know, act, act nice. I am not that way. I am, uh, I am a piece of work is what I am. Uh, yep. Charles says, uh, I didn't happen to notice in your hands-on preview video if the grip had a shutter button. It does. Does the grip have a shutter button for vertical shooting? It does. It has all those things. Unlike the Nikon battery grip, which is literally just a battery pack. No button, no nothing. So you get... Where is my grip at? I don't know. Yeah, here it is. It looks almost exactly like this. Exactly the same. Exactly. It even got a built-in function button, and you've also got your quick menu button. So, almost exactly like this. Thumbstick, and your AFE and your AFL buttons, and of course your normal and boost switch. Exactly. So. Man, you all are chatting so hard right now. I'm trying to keep up, man. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, Polyrhythm says, uh, why can the X-T3 with the vertical battery, uh, battery grip on it continue filming when one of the batteries runs out, but the X-T2 with vertical, vertical battery grip cannot? I don't know. Uh, I don't... I don't know if it was uh, a circuitry thing, uh, a circuitry thing with the grip or not, <clears throat> but it's still one of the biggest pains in my ass uh, with the XT2 to this day. You know, sh you know, if you start off shooting some video and one of your batteries gets low and then it dies, it kills the video, and then you've got to restart it again uh, with the new battery. So yeah, it, that's always been a major gripe of mine with the uh, the XT2. You know, nothing's perfect, but damn, I mean that is annoying. It, it just doesn't overflow into the next battery and then overflow into the next battery. Uh, let me see here. Is the eye autofocus really improved that much? I wonder if it's better for still than video, considering Sony doesn't have even have face and eye autofocus in their video. No, it works in both, and it is good. It locks on, and it is good. Uh... I, I would have liked to have, tr at the time that I tested it, from the back of the screen, it was locking on. Unfortunately, the lens that was on the camera at the time it got passed over to me was the 16 millimeter 1.4. So it's a wide angle and it's super sharp anyway. It was, it's really hard to tell just how well it's going to do unless you can zoom in a little bit. But like I said, I, I it got passed to me with a 16 millimeter on there. So... 
we won't really know until we're able to get you know a decent uh, lens that could benefit greatly from the uh, autofocus. So I don't know. But it looked really fast. It felt really fast. And the video that I was able to, you know, record with it, I was able to record a couple of clips, but like I said, with a 16 millimeter, you know, 1.4, uh, it's, not, it's not that hard to get, get shit in focus. Uh, Cosmo Gang says, and now I'm lusting for an X-Pro3 companion to my X-T3 pre-order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Luke says the focus stats show two stops better in low light, but ISO uh, shows 25% improvement. So what's the real story for night photography? I don't know, man. Uh, all I know is what now the focus. I, I I was under the impression that the focus was down to negative three EV. Was that wrong? Somebody needs to look that up for me. I could have sworn it was negative three EV. Uh, Rod says low light equals master lighting. That's true. You should always light your uh, your scenes appropriately. And no matter how well I light myself, no matter what setting I put this thing on, Google's stupid camera app, I mean, it just blows shit out every single time. It's terrible. I'm going to get me one of those uh, cam links, and I'm just going to use my, my real camera the next time I do a live stream. Uh, Charles says, I get it uh, about the crop versus full frame sensor. However, I just want a camera that just works without having to worry about it. Uh, worry about if I should have gotten uh, a full frame over a crop sensor camera. I don't know, man. If you're thinking like that, just go ahead and get the full frame so you can feel good about yourself. <laughs> I mean, to, to those of us that have, have genuinely given crop sensors a try. Now, not all crop sensors are made equal. Not all crop sensor cameras come with a full, developed, amazing lens lineup like Fujifilm does. Sony's got APS-C, but their APS-C lenses ain't that good. I mean, they're, they're good enough. They're, you know, for 99% for of the people out there, they're going to be good enough. But if you're a critical shooter, if you do any kind of client work, I mean, you, end up, you can't depend on their native lenses. You have to go... Zeiss, you have to get like the baddest and the Tuit lenses and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to spend that much on lenses anyway, just go with Fuji. Polyrhythm says, uh, same, not trading in my X-T2, no way. Hell no. If anyone trades in their X-T2, they are dumb. Straight up dumb. Uh, Mark Edgar says, I will keep my X-T1 and my X-H1. Still going to get an X-T3. Boom. I'm telling you, these cameras are good for long term. I don't really see them becoming, you know, the cameras are pretty enough. I just like looking at them on a shelf. I don't care if the whole thing blows up inside. As long as it keeps looking pretty, man, I'm going to keep them on my shelf. They really are. Let's see. Hang on. Um... Damn it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Lol, the way you love the camera. You and Omar Gonzalez should hang out together. Yeah, I, I catch a, a couple of his videos every now and then. I used to watch him back in the day when he still had braces. Longrider says, Mark, uh, do you know if the new Zebra works on stills? Yes, it does, my friend. It works in all modes. Boogernator says, no hurt feelings. Thanks, buddy. Love you, pal. Henry says, lol. <laughs> Cosmo Gang says, yeah, what Long Rider asked. Uh, Mark Edgar says, uh, should we call you Angry Photographer 2? Laughing out loud, just kidding. Why does everyone say that? Do me and him ain't nothing alike. I mean, t oh, you know what? Check it out. This is a true story. Maybe it's a cultural thing. I don't know. Uh, he and I both live in the same state. We live about 45 minutes away from each other. He went and posted out, he posted up a couple of, uh, Fujifilm X-T3 preview videos. I mean, you know, if you want to call him that, I think he just recorded them with his cell phone, but he, uh, yeah, he went to the exact same brand camera store that I went to today, only he went to the one near him and I went to the one near me 
Yeah, it's true. It's a true story, guys. But yeah, but no, I'm not angry. Like, I, I like to go, yeah. You know, I like to make those faces. It's for comedic effect, man. I'm. People don't get it, though. People always think I'm so serious. Who, who is that? Photo me Mike or photo me Ike or whatever. He goes, dude, why are you so angry? Why are you so pissed? I'm like, I'm not. I'm not. Why do people keep saying that? <laughs> they always say, man, you're so salty. Dude, you're really salty in that video today. You know, some people are like, dude, I really like it. And other people are like, no way. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not angry ever. I mean, maybe, maybe if I stub my toe, then I'm really pissed. Oh, you know what I have been really angry about here lately? They say that you should not drop your Apple Pencil. No matter what I do, I drop this thing at least three times a day, and I'm like, holy shit, it's going for it, it's going for it, and it hits the tip every single time. And I'm walking around here, I'm going, God damn it. Gets on my last, like, the one thing I'm not supposed to drop, I don't drop anything else, but this thing, religiously, three times a day. I'm going, are you serious? It happened again? That, yeah, so yeah, I get pissed about that. It's always the little things with me. It's never, it's never something big. It's always little stuff. <laughs> uh, let's see. Camera guy says, it changes your opinion even when you don't intend to. That's why the manufacturers have these events. Even the YouTubers uh, who had negative reviews would have flamed them much worse. I agree. I agree. It does. It, it alters your perception even just that much. And if it does it that much and you really want to go on the next little outing and it changes that much, how long before you're not even getting a real opinion? You know what I mean? I'm not opposed to these press junkets. I'm not. You know, I think they're valuable. Uh, because the camera companies do take the time to set up shooting events. Uh, they do take the time to set up um, instances where you have an opportunity to shoot and photograph things where the, the product is going to benefit. So I'm not opposed to those instances. What I am opposed to is watching a YouTuber actually go soft and you can see it like you can see you can see him like thinking up excuses you can see him you know kind of you know going around the going around the bend a little bit like uh you know it's you know we, we we wish we had a little something else but you know always said yeah but you know overall oh you know i always go overall though it's a fantastic camera right that's how it always goes uh, 360 Mix says, I'm telling you, it looks like you're in the, uh, back of a VW bug, uh, VW love bug wagon. Love from Florida. Thanks, buddy. Hope you all don't get any storms down there, man. It's looking pretty dangerous. Camera guy says, uh, I have to go to the dinners with sales and senior management often, and it's an old strategy. Indeed it is. It's, yeah, it's, there's nothing new about it. You know, take a trip, you know, they feed you some booze. Yeah, I'm a little tipsy. I think I love your camera now. <laughs> okay, I'm about done, boys. How long have I even been on? Oh my God, I've been on here almost an hour. But you're all, I love you guys so hard. McWay says, uh, how is the app for Fuji uh, to do remote control better than the others? Uh, about, about the same. I mean, you can change everything, though. You can set shutter speed, aperture, ISO, film simulation, white balance, uh, exposure compensation. You can do all of those things. The only thing you cannot do is turn it sideways and do it in landscape. You're kind of constrained at just this. Uh, your feed is at the top and then all of your settings are down at the bottom. You can also swap in the app between photo and video. I mean, you can do, you can do quite a bit, but I would say it's about, about average. Henry says, uh, nice, better audio from that road mic, Mark. Uh, you were right about your past video, uh, reviewing the, uh, Techstar, uh, SGC 598. Good value, mic for being inexpensive. Uh, I also liked it uh, when you did stream with Eric Rossi. Yeah, man, I haven't I haven't done a stream with Eric in quite some time. I think our schedules are just getting crossed a bit. 
But uh, I did talk to Ted Forbes, man, uh, just a couple of days. Uh, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. Seems like it, because when you talk to Ted, he shot me an email and was talking about my uh, new format, the new show in the morning, the morning jolt, right? He's like, man, I think you're on to something with that. And I said, I think I am too, man. Really started to pick up that second week. And it felt more like me. Didn't feel as corporate. Didn't feel as like, oh, I better say, you know, specific. Just just stick to the script. Don't try and connect. Just stay robotic, you know. I don't like doing that. Yeah, you, you guys usually get the real me on the morning jolts and definitely on live streams. I, like, I'm... What you see is what you get, man. A lot of me just kind of toning it down for the other videos was... Um, I mean, it was mainly just because I want people to keep sending me shit. <laughs> I don't want to have to buy every single thing because Amazon cracked down. Seriously, you can't just buy stuff and return it now. They cracked down on that. <laughs> Nikon 1 is battery brick. Yep. Luke says, podcast? I don't know, man. I've thought about it, but I'm, the morning jolt is kind of my podcast. It's, you know, it's not interactive or anything. But maybe, I mean, I've thought about it. I just, do people still really like hardcore listen to podcasts anymore? Uh, RM Pictures One says, I'm digging the face eye uh, tracking from what I can see. Haven't fully committed to the Sony Switch. So, see? They keep you on the edge there, buddy. Uh, Antone says, Is the shutter button on top? Is the shutter button on top like the X-T2? Feels weird when going to press it. It does, but I mean, you should put a soft a soft button on there. Makes it feel much more natural. I mean, I know, I know that some people like to have it sort of rounded up to the front like uh, a lot of the DSLRs, but I mean, it's all muscle memory, man. It's, it's all what you just get. It's, you know, you get used to stuff. Charles says, cool, I have no idea what Nikon was thinking when they omitted the shutter button on the battery pack. No, they knew exactly what they were thinking. They knew exactly. They're like, dude, come here. Take a look at what I did. Can you see it? Neither can I. I took the button off, man. Uh, it was kind of an accident at first, but now they're going out like that. So, whatever, just let them have it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, McWay says, do you use ND filters when you're out shooting video? Of course. Uh, I personally recommend, uh, breakthrough photography ND filters. They have the absolute best ND filters. Personal opinion, but uh, they're very expensive. They are not cheap, but you get what you pay for. I will tell you all that right here, right now. In almost everything, but especially in glass you get what you pay for no x patterns no color casts no you know breakthrough photography helped me get my uh solar eclipse shots polyrhythm says i wish the fuji app would simply offer a full screen landscape view uh would be useful for video i do not get why the fuji remote app only provides you such a tiny little live view yep jose says hey hello brother how's it going man from Chile. Mark Edgar says, it is negative three EV. I told you, man. I told you. Too Smart says, uh, you think Fuji is going to come out with any uh, F1.8 zooms? That Sigma 18 to 35 has been killed for years. You know, they might, but I mean, unfortunately, we cannot get around physics. And half of the allure of APS-C is the lightweight. I mean, I think there's a good chance that Fuji might I just haven't seen it on the roadmap yet, so I would hate to speculate, you know. Oh, sh All right, I'm going to have to skip down, man. You all are killing it with these chat. Okay, I think I'm good. Uh, Derek says, uh, what are your thoughts on the new Fuji GFX 50R coming out? It seems like it would be a nice companion to, for the X-T3. <clears throat> yeah, and as a matter of fact, I asked the Fuji rep today about that, and he's like, I cannot confirm nor deny the existence of such a camera. So, we're allowed to rumor about it all day long. He said, but if there was a camera like that, yeah, 
it's going to be badass. I mean, I'm not a huge rangefinder camera guy myself. Um, it, it does take some getting used to if you come from classical SLR style uh, cameras. But I can see the, I mean, it does have a certain beauty to it. It does. Uh, let's see. Alex says, does video mode uh, still having focus noise on it? No. It, that all depends on what lens you're using, man. <clears throat> Luke says, Fuji has the best manual focus, period. I don't know about the best, but it is pretty damn close. Um, I especially love manual focusing with the uh, 60mm f1.4. Chad says, let's pray that the new processor elevates the lockups like on the uh, XH1. The XH1 Facebook group is flooded with people having this issue. Uh, alleviates the lockups. Well, I mean, I hit several different uh, high bursts and I didn't have any problems. I mean, you know, I don't know how long it takes for the problem to develop. Or how long that, uh, you know, how many shots that people were taking before they started noticing the issue. But, I mean, I, I tried to lay on it to kind of get a feel for, you know, what that speed was going to be like uh, in both the mechanical shutter and the electronic shutter. And I will just say, with my limited amount of uh, exposure to the camera today, I did not, I did not feel anything. So, it, maybe it's design flaw of the X-H1, perhaps. <clears throat> Uh, Owen Wagner says, yeah, I'm at the Anger Photographer in Lexington. I even showed up uh, in one of his videos. Did you really? That's hilarious. <clears throat> Mark Edgar says, I was just kidding. Ken is not really angry either. He keeps it real. Yeah, I know he's not angry. Just annoying as shit when he does that fake laugh and he starts slapping his head. I, I want to go over there and slap his head for him when he starts doing that shit. I'm just like, will you cut that shit out just for once? And quit looking through your eye, your finger like that. Yeah. It's like, dude, I mean, everyone's got their little signature move, I guess. Go ahead, show me that little move I taught you there, pork chop. Slap yourself in the face and look through your fingers. That's going to get him. Y'all can tell him. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Oh, Boogernator, you sweet son of a bitch. I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> Henry says, nice. Uh, it would be nice to see both of you uh, together to talk about the camera brands. He would agree with you about the big companies not responding to customers. Probably, yeah. And the Kai Man Wong video press event for Canon EOS R in England, probably London. And the photography setups were very elaborate. And they were. Yeah, I happened to catch his video, too. Um... Some of those events they do over in London look so much better than some of the stuff we do here in the States. Uh, they just have a different aesthetic, and I like high fashion when it's weird. You know, I don't just like typical high fashion. I, I want people to be in, like, weird hats and crazy elaborate makeup and, you know, buck wild shit that you would see in, like, I don't know, some sort of fantasy movie or whatever. Always the villain wears the coolest stuff, so I want everyone to be villains. Um, Longrider says, I am heading south tomorrow to take pictures of the storm. Cool, man. Be sure to, uh, Instagram that. Share it with us. Millie says, hey, I didn't know you were live. Now you do, my dear. I hope you were doing well. You haven't contacted me yet. Um, I wanted, I wanted to check up on you. Um, Millie says, do you, uh, did you ever talk about the X-T100? I have not. That's a, that's a review video. I'm talking about the X-T3 tonight. Camera guy says, did you ask the Fuji Rep why only 720p when using the app? No, but I've asked him before, and they, they never have an answer. They never have an answer for me. Jesus Christ, man. Y'all kept me over, on up for over an hour. Mm -hmm. Too smart says, ever watch Blue Chips? I wonder if Canon sent girls to the room. <laughs> uh, no. Peter Ferry says, uh, how was low-light performance on the X-T3 compared to the X-T2? Uh, they didn't have any, like, super-duper uh, low-light area, but I made them. You weren't here when I said this earlier, but I made them take me. I said, do you have a boiler room or a utility closet or something like that? I said, I just want to crack open the door, and I want to try out the uh, low-light performance. So they took me back to the back, 
<clears throat> and they uh, allowed me to just like shoot into a dark room. I mean, it, it, there was nothing special about the photograph. Literally, just went into a closet. But it, it, the photographs that I was shooting in that area, snappy, much faster than the XT2. So, I mean, if you're just looking for a, a performance bump, you're you're gonna get it. Uh, Luke says, "Love rangefinders and my X100F." I mean, some people, I mean, they've got rangefinders have a very loyal following, so I would not take that away from you all. I'm a classic SLR kind of guy. I've always liked them. I've always used them. <clears throat> the only rangefinders I've ever used were the uh, Sony A6000 and my old film cameras. You know those long ones that were. I don't know. You cry. I don't know. Uh, let's see. How long before we see a Fuji X-H2? Probably in about a year and a half. The X-H1 just came out, man. Boogernator says, Fuji X-T3 or Sony A3 and go. Oh, God. Why would you do that to me? Oh, my God. Um. Probably at this point, knowing everything that I know, I would probably go with the Fuji because they are going to support the camera longer. Sony will probably just crank out a new camera in nine months or so. So, you know, while the camera that you buy from them, if it's cutting edge now, don't expect it to continuously be updated so that it remains relevant well into the future, unfortunately. So it, it, my, my choice now would be solely based on my experience with firmware updates and them, Fuji making sure that the camera remains relevant. That's that's truth, man. I'm not going to say that the Sony cameras are not amazing. I, I bought into it. I, I love the Sony systems. The unfortunate part about Sony is that they just replace the camera. They don't actually update the camera very often. Not like Fuji. Like Fuji adds features, whereas most camera companies just fix bugs or fix quirks with the camera. They don't actually add any features because for whatever reason, uh, you know, they try to protect the other cameras in their line. So instead of just throwing it all to you, like Fujifilm does, and you know, I, 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 I try to not sound overly fanboy-ish, but I mean, there is something to be said about a camera company that doesn't force you to buy a camera only to fix problems, right? I mean, if they shipped it from the manufacturer and it has issues or it has problems or it has quirks that, you know, are, like, tolerable, not deal-breaking, not, not anything like that, Nikon used to just let them live on forever. And then they would just release a new camera in two years and then fix all those issues and then add one or two extra features to say, hey, we've did something <laughs> this year. You want to come buy a new camera? But I mean, Fujifilm adds features all the time. Fixes bugs, improves algorithms all the time. So if it if it came down to which one, probably Fuji. And, and unless unless Sony changed their philosophy, I mean, it would have to be something pretty drastic too. Yoi Pei says, can you charge uh, the both the grip and the in-body battery by using the Type-C port? I do not know. That is actually a fantastic question, and I wish I had known that. I would have asked it myself, but I do not know. Got to be honest. Uh, but I do know that you can use the camera while charging. So if you don't have the battery grip, you can use an external power bank. Plug it in via USB-C, and you will be able to... Um, Use the camera while charging. Kind of makes this irrelevant unless you're just a, a hardcore grip loving photographer or you like to do a lot of portraits. Um, let's see. I'm, go I'm only going to read a few more, guys, and i got to go. Richard says, um, <clears throat> using an external recorder definitely helps any and every SLR uh, on reducing to eliminating camera and focus sounds. It's true. Remove the sound recording away from the camera, and you are definitely going to get cleaner audio. <clears throat> Luke says, 
Uh, lol, when he laughs, uh, I can't turn the volume down fast enough. I know, I know, it's loud. It's my bad. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Happens all the time. That's the reason I usually use a dynamic microphone on my uh, morning jolt videos, because I, I, I crack myself up all the time, so I'm constantly laughing. All right, I'm going to stop. Charles, anyone else here headed to North Carolina to photograph the storm? Please be careful. True story. Seriously, I mean, I love storm uh, photographing storms too, but don't chase. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, man. I got a frog in my throat. Something. I'm not gonna say. Can't tell you. <laughs> uh, okay, Polyrhythm says it's 3 a.m. here, but I just cannot close this live stream. You seem so nice. Thanks, man. You seem nice too. We should hook up and, like, hug each other and stuff. Uh, Owen says, When I was talking to the Fuji guys in Lexington, he seemed to think there was a possibility that they might announce the X-H2 early. You know, if they do, if they're just trying to compete against some of the uh, newer video offerings, maybe the, um, maybe they're, may, you know, there's a really good chance they could just be competing against the Panasonic GH line. I never thought of that, but there's a really good chance that they could be doing that. Uh, Mark says X-T1 is still relevant. It is a com uh, it is a completely new camera over the one that was first released, and that is a fact. It's 16 megapixel, more than enough to produce just about any size print that you, as a lone person, are ever going to print out. Image quality is just as good. Uh, you pair it up with any of the phenomenal Fuji lenses. I mean, and it is dirt, dirt cheap. Like 400, 500 bucks right now, you can pick up a, a XH1 or a XT1. Uh, Mark says Fuji supports their cameras better than anyone in the industry, period. Thanks for backing me up on that one. I'll see. Dude, is your last, like, is that name, is that Punani? Is that what that is? I think it is Pujani. I think it's Punani, though. Fuji versus Sony, the answer is glass. I love the Sony's technology, but they seem to not really, uh, uh, not really serious about their APS-C lenses, especially now that they got more competition on the full frame market. I'm worried. Yeah, and I mean, I, I've said it before. They 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 don't care about APS-C. What they what they've done is they are hoping that people just go ahead and buy the full frame glass and then put it on the uh, smaller bodies. I mean, some people know this, some people don't. Sony, their, ma their mount, it's an APS-C mount. It's not even a full-frame mount. I mean, their full frames are wedged in that mount. I mean, it is a forced proposition with the uh, Sony E-mount. That, that, that mount started with the NEX line of cameras, and they just kept it. They were like, ah, oh, it's good enough. I mean, we just barely fit it in there, but good enough. So, yeah, it's actually uh, an APS-C mount. So, Josh says, makes me wonder what the X-H2 will look like considering video specs in the X-T3. Does it not? I mean, you can always dream about uh, what's coming next, but <clears throat> the reality is most people will never use one-fifth of what these cameras have in them now. They are just so chocked full of everything. And the X-T3 is no exception. I felt a bit overwhelmed because for those of you that have the X-T2, you'll know that like the, um, whatever, let's, let me get into my menu here right quick. Uh, if you go into the video menu, we only have two pages currently on the X-T2. On the X-T3, there are five pages of settings video now five pages of settings for video now go ahead you may now begin to poop into your panties true story five pages uh, uh, Tasmanian Devil says what do you think uh, the weather resistance is like on the X-T3 they say that it's weather resistant. I mean, I would say that it's pretty durable. I mean, they did plenty of tests with the X-T2, and it survived a lot of stuff, so I would say pretty durable. Um, yes, 
Mel Santiago says, does he turn a sim work uh, work on steel? Yes, it does. It is a choosable film simulation, just like in the X, uh, X-T2. You can apply any of those film simulations to either video or stills. So Eterna will be available. Um, it's a little bit more subdued, in my opinion, than even classic Chrome. At least the colors seem that way. Um, I still like recording most of my stuff uh, in pro negative standard so uh, Richard says rolling shutter on video XT3 yeah uh, that was in my preview video from earlier today man if you want to see the rolling shutter it's there it's definitely there my friend uh, it's probably not as bad in 1080p but I just the only one I recorded was the 4k so if you want to see the rolling shutter I mean we're talking skews brother Excuse for days. But, I mean, that's not Fujifilm's fault. That's not Canon's fault. That's not Nikon's fault. That's not Sony's fault. It is the fault of not having global shutters. Uh, I think Fuji has one camera that has a global shutter. What is it, the 100F or the 100T? Something like that. One of their cameras actually has a global shutter. So, I was like, I asked the rep today, I was like, so why didn't you put, like, you know, or no, it was it a global shutter? No, it was a leaf shutter. But they've also got built-in NDs, too. There's one camera that's got the built-in NDs. I was like, why didn't you all do that to this? I was like, y'all would have blew it up. I mean, you're still going to blow it up, but it was like, you're really going to blow, you, you would have blowed this up out the water, bruh. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, so, all right, guys, we're slowing down, and that's good for me because I have got to get the hell out of here. I love you all so much. I may, I'm, shit, man, you sent a message again. Philippe! Philippe! Now that the X-T3 is out, do you think that there will be an X-H2 with the same sensor processor? Probably, yes. Uh, Henry Sherman says, Mark deserves more likes. Thank you for your time, and have a good night. I appreciate it, man. Henry, you're a super nice guy. Mark, good night. I love all y'all, man. Y'all are nice. Thank you all so much. I appreciate the donations. Honestly, I, I want to tell y'all the truth right now. Uh, this is the first live stream that I've ever done where somebody has actually gave me a donation. I feel special. I feel all warm and cuddly on the inside. I think I'm going to have a drink and, you know, touch myself. You know. Maybe a massage. What the hell are you talking about? All right, guys. Y'all been awesome. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Uh, I will see you all hopefully either tomorrow uh, on the Morning Jolt. I don't know if I'm going to make one tomorrow. I don't think I can. My flippy screen ain't here. Probably not going to be here till Monday. I want my flippy screen. All right, guys. Have a good night. Peace.